Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room where I'm about to do my yearly wrap up and I'm almost honestly scared to get in there and edit this because I feel like I made more things this year than I made last year. I do have my roundups for 2020 and 2021. The past couple of years here I've been making this sort of video where I grab a clip of everything I've made to try and recap uh, and kind of review for myself what I ended up making in total for the year. I will be listing all of these projects that have videos associated with them in the description below so you can click over to the video in question if you'd like to see me make that item if I have a video for it. Most things I make, I make a video for, whether if that's um, here on the channel or over on Patreon. Sometimes there will be projects that will pop up that were Patreon exclusives and those videos can be found over on my Patreon of course. But I do fear we have quite a lot to get through today, let's jump on in. And we begin the year of 2022 with the long promised slip video. I made this paneled slip with an empire waist and a uh, like the main body of it is split into princess seamed slash gourd sections here as you can see so if you'd like to see how to do any of these design details this might be a good video to find those in i will link of course like i said all the links to these videos below so here i am beginning in my underwear and then i switch over to at least having a dressing gown on thank goodness because my my the indecency of it all so here's my giant crimson peak costumes inspired house coat that I do wear all the time down here in the basement because it's quite chilly down here. Um, and this again is just the most ridiculously goth house coat thing that I can wear to scare the UPS people or the guy dropping off the HelloFresh. It's just, you know, it feels quite spectacular to have sleeves and flounces this large. Next up I made this forest green and navy blue uh, iridescent rayon twill dress over on Patreon as a practice for making the Butterick uh, dress that I made later on the channel that you'll see in a moment, but this has that same sort of draped sash across the front But I let it have a, uh, a longer scarf attached to it that hangs down the back, which I think is quite fun I need to make another variation of this design with a simpler like dress underneath but with the same shoulder drape And then I started playing with this dagged neckline that I've been playing with so much this year I made this very simple little black dress with my basic block pattern a three-quarter sleeve and then this dagged neckline to be able to show off necklaces because I do have a lot of vintage necklaces in my collection or sets of jewelry in my collection and I wanted to be able to wear uh, my necklaces more often because they do get a bit neglected since I'm such a brooch lover. Then I made this chartreuse and black striped taffeta top, wrap back top, no shock there. We'll be seeing a billion of these this year, uh, the wrap back top in general. But this one has gathered sides and I made it to show how I match stripes in a chevron way down the center front like this. So I made this as an example to show how I use stripes. Then it was time to make the actual uh, Butterick version of this dress. Uh, this was a copy of a 1940s pattern that I did or you know had to figure out how to do basically because this involved a lot of different things that I hadn't done before but I do you know want to increase my patterning drafting skills um, that way I can demonstrate more and different things for all of you over the next few years of course because I know what I like but I want to be able to expand into what other people might like as well which includes something like this. This is a dress I made over on Patreon that has these funny hip gathered flouncy things and normally I don't like adding width to my hip personally because I think I come with enough naturally um, but this little hip flouncy things actually I do quite like it on this dress it gets a little bit lost in the print so it's not too overwhelming and you could put pockets in here if you wanted to this also has a like yoke gathering up here on the neckline as well that's quite fun and it has that high neckline that I do always like but this is quite a classic 1940s like end of the 40s into the 1950s dress that again was based on another, I think this was a Butterick, might have been a McCall's, an old pattern from the 1940s. And luckily I do have more of this red rose rayon crepe to use in the future because it is just so nice. Then it was time to finish up the Mandragora Day Bodice. I finished up the beading on this uh, gown that I had made last year and then I made this hat to match so I could finally take some finished photos of this Mandragora gown. So a little bit of bead work this year but mostly just making the hat to finish up the day version of this ensemble in the lovely Mandragora silk. But of course I did go ahead and make the evening bodice as well. So here is that um, with a couple different colors of green silk and lots of beadwork and some of my beaded bugs pinned on here as well. That's the other thing that's not included in this video, but I did make a lot of these beaded bug brooches this year, quite a few, uh, at least a dozen or more. So um, those aren't included in this video, but I do have quite the menagerie of them and I look forward to making more in the future. And then we have all the projects I made during the like shine timeline for the shine video. So this was actually a dress I had cut out ages ago. I recut out the bodice pieces, added some of this faux patent leather and finally finished up this dress. The lining on this is a little bit thick. So this dress is a tiny bit small on me, but I think I'm a little bit smaller right now. So it might just work. I have to try it on again. Um, then I have this color blocked cotton PK dress that I made. Uh, I posted the process of this on Instagram, which probably can still be found in the depths of my sewing folder over there. Um, I didn't make a video for this one, but I did 
um, document the process pretty thoroughly on Instagram while I was making it. Different colors of pique, mostly left over from making a navy dress and a black dress, and then I added the green in as well. Then of course, yes, another wrap back top, this time in a gorgeous brocade from moodfabrics.com. This brocade again was a bit of leftovers for making a dress out of this. So when I end up, I would rather have a little bit too much fabric than not enough. And when I end up with leftovers, I do try and use them, especially if there's something fancy like this. And this dress, I ended up having plenty of leftover of this shiny fabric. So I actually made a mock neck top out of the same shine fabric recently. But many of you were excited about this dress and I was glad uh, because I didn't know how it was going to go over this weird superhero dress. Real return Tomorrowland as I called it. But I ended up making another one here on the channel later in the year, which we will see later in this video. But here is that navy blue PK, the dress that spawned the cutoffs that ended up in that color blocks dress. So here's the solid navy blue dress here. This just has angled side darts, my all-in-one sleeve, and then again this peaked little neckline that I can fill in with necklaces. Um, this is just a simple navy dress that I can pair with anything, style different ways with different colors for either summer or fall. Then I have this black holographic stretch patent look spandex skirt, and then another wrap back top, this time in this neon and purple brocade that I've had in my stash for quite a while, as I said earlier in the year. I finally, you know, worked up the courage to use it, making this wrap back top, this skirt here. The wrap back top is actually in the reverse of the fabric, so it shows both sides of the fabric. And then I used the outside of the fabric to make this skirt with a side drape, and then I made this dress as well, which kind of combines those two items into one garment. So yes, I love this brocade so much that I have a set of three, a dress, a skirt, and a top. But this time, this brocade here was a lot more expensive. So all I made out of this was this lovely pencil skirt. It's just one very special pencil skirt in a very luxurious fabric that I used a lot of rewards points to grab, to snatch, but I can pair it with any black top or blazer and, you know, perhaps dark teal in the future as well. Here we have another of the stretch skirts, this time in a sort of rainbow oil, rainbow oil slick finish on a navy backing here. Um, this fabric is quite pretty. I actually have another yard of this coming so I can make a matching top for this. But this top is an iridescent brocade again from Mood Fabrics in a white iridescent bubbly finish that I just love. Another wrap back top. Again, we're going to be seeing even more of them. I just love that pattern. It's my favorite thing ever. And here is my all-in-one sleeve on my basic block skirt. Just another totally basic dress with that dagged neckline again, just in a fantastic fabric. I'm quite a fan of doing this where it's a bold fabric, but a very simple pattern. Um, so this is just my dress that I know I like very well. Uh, basically my basic block with an all-in-one sleeve in a fantastic fabric. And here again is that top from that dress, but this time with the red stretch skirt, because we're going to talk about some stretch skirts here. This really upped my totals for the year, all these skirts. So I have the red patent look one. I have this iridescent, uh, spectrum sort of dot fabric that I have a little bit of a flare at this one. Then we have the faux croc faux leather one. This fabric is from Joann's. I have this other black iridescent one. I made a bunch of these this year. Not even all of them are going to be included in this video because I haven't worn all of them on camera, but they only take about 20, you know, 30 minutes to make. So it means that I make quite a lot of them because it takes one, one yard of fabric or less and is very fast. So here's a navy blue one as well. And over on Patreon, I made this black cotton sateen and black Tyvek, shiny Tyvek jacket here. Um, this was actually included in my most recent lookbook, but you didn't get to see the jacket much because I was wearing that weird hooded collared vest thing over it. But here is the suit all by itself and then with the spectrum skirt as well. I do really like this with the matching sateen skirt, it makes it look more like a suit. And I have a lot to learn about tailoring, but I am still having fun along the way at least. And then I made the full on texture blocked, I believe we we're calling this. It's basically color blocking, just using different textures of fabrics instead of different colors, using the black hollow spandex stretchy latex faux latex fabric, and again, black pique to make this jacket and matching skirt. This is rather heavy just because the pique is so heavy. So it wasn't perhaps the best textile choice. If I had made this with like a black suiting, I think it would be even better, but it is still very fun. I still very much like the design and like all the chevroning down the back and things like that. It's just a little bit of a weird, like heavy fabric. It makes me feel like I'm wearing a suit of armor when I have it on, which isn't the worst thing. And from a suit of armor to something in a lightweight, flowy rayon chalet, here's a little simple summer dress that I made to show off how to do this S-curved 1940s design that you cannot see the S-curve in here because of course it is lost in the print, but a dark floral is perfect for me and my wardrobe for the spring and summer. I still want to have my darkly noir touch to things. So this is my version of a summer outfit anymore. I quite like wearing a lot of black even in summertime. And here is the solicitor and Blade Runner or whatever I called this version of the Realtor in Tomorrowland dress. Lots of, again, small sections, color blocking. I guess this is pattern, blo pattern blocking this time because we have a solid and a pattern here. And this pattern is actually a, again, a stretch fabric that I layered over sateen to 
create the effect I wanted, but it has a reflective finish on it. So I will be safe even in the evening in this one because it's quite reflective. And then I have this sort of space queen <clears throat> looking dress that I started experimenting with. We're gonna see quite a few in this vein, but this is the first one I made over on Patreon with this blue iridescent stretch knit and then a blue polyester uh, shantung fabric is what this is out of. I wish I had interlined this shantung, but that is something I learned making this dress. I still very much like this design with its funny bishop sleeves that you can open up or close. And I ended up making another of these in, of course, my favorite fabric, black cotton sateen, with an iridescent oil slick dot stretch under sleeve and accent here. I haven't worn this one out yet, but I just love this dress. It makes me feel like a villain in the best way possible, which is really all I ask of my clothing. And because I had quite a few requests to show how I made the green lame peplum top that I showed off in that stretched skirts video, um, I made another one here in the same fabric in a silver holographic glittery finish. This fabric, again, is very irritating to work with, but might be worth it because this one has like a holographic tinsel in it. It's very, very fun, but uh, I don't want to make another one anytime soon. And despite my still being focused on space age designs, I decided to, you know, embrace the fact that it was summer and finally make a few summery things, including this simple wrap skirt, sort of sarong style skirt and matching crop top that I made here on the channel in a rayon poplin here, again, with a little bit of black, this time with a leafy print in this dark orchidy purple color and mustard yellow. Once again, I think this is a good, you know, vacation outfit. Not that I went on vacation this year or have any tropical destinations planned, but I digress. But while I had finally conceded to summer on the channel, over on Patreon, I was still making Space Queen dresses, including the black and neon one that again, I wore in Synapse recently. Um, a lot of the times you see these are not fully zipped up the back. They do zip up all the way up the back. It's just whether or not I want to stretch to do that while I'm doing quick changes while modeling down here that it gets done. And then we have the red number because I just couldn't stop making these that I did here on the channel. So I can put a card up to the video for this one because it is one of the more spectacular things I made this year and one of my favorite garments I've made ever with the iridescent organza lining the sleeves that matches the stretch knit sections so well in this epic peplum. Really, I, I'm the queen of Tomorrowland dress, had to have it. But yes, I was still making some summery things as well. So here is a cotton batik set that I made over on Patreon. This is actually a wrap top and again a wrap skirt in cotton. This top wraps around the back and ties in the front. Um, so I can wear these two pieces separately, but this is a fully wrap garment and so is the skirt. They just wrap differently. So one ties at the side, this one ties at the center front like so. Um, and you can actually tie them, tie it in different ways if you want to. Same with the skirts, honestly, but very versatile for throwing over a bathing suit for again, the hottest of days and perhaps, you know, tropical locales. Not that I visit such things often, but we can pretend by at least having the outfit ready. And still over on Patreon, I was making more of these. <laughs> so here it is, the like penguin space queen dress, I suppose, with its two-tone sleeves. I guess it's more of a stormtrooper-y dress, we can say that, um, to make it more Star Wars as opposed to penguin-y. It is a bit penguin-y. But I really like the two-tones sleeves on this, so you'll see me use that again in a minute. But I think actually, I, I ended up making a new version of this design, but I think I actually like this first version better now in hindsight, but meh. You know, I was playing around with these quite a lot. Then I made the Alfred Shaheen inspired batik dress with a side zipper, how unusual for me here on the channel. So this was my like very pinupy summer dress that I did this year in this lovely olive green and navy blue batik. You can tell that I love a batik cotton for summertime, washable and yet so pretty and still holds a nicer crispness than most quilting cottons do. I think it's a really nice apparel fabric, honestly, even though it's not listed as one. And the last of these dresses that I was doing over on Patreon, this was again, my like newer version of the other one. And you can see some of these details did end up going into the black and red dress I made later in the year for Verity, but uh, this one actually is my least favorite. I might, I might sell this one. I still like it. It's just something about the lower neckline. It just doesn't do it for me, you know? But speaking of Verity, time to do all the Verity projects. So I have this print cotton ottoman top that buttons down the back, slight peplum on this one, but completely sleeveless, which will be even more useful now that I have chrysanthemums on the top of my left arm. Here, I just wanted to show off my lower arm, but you know, now the, up, the upper half of that arm is getting filled in. <clears throat> you know, it's a spooky garden arm. That's what I've decided. But this top is very fun. I actually really like this and I want to make more like this, especially more with sequins like that as well. But here's another of the peplum wrap back tops, this time just in two tones of brocade. And again, this is using leftover bits of brocade because if you have any strange shapes of Lurex brocade laying about, I will make them into something. It's just guaranteed. And yes, the two-tone Black Widow dress that I do actually quite like is this one here, which has a little bit of a stand collar and a V-neck, but still higher neck. And then my new tulip sleeve that I've fallen in love with this year. I used to think they were like too 
girlish for some reason, but now I realize they're uh, whittling, waist whittling powers because they do create again a wider shoulder and that angle along the arm really helps create quite a triangular shape just where I want it. And here this is not the tulip sleeve again here on the wrap dress that I made this year. I again had this fabric in my stash for a couple of years and was too afraid to use it because you know it's a floral on a black background my favorite kind of fabric I didn't want to mess it up but I'm very pleased with this dress I can't wait to wear it out and about in the spring and summer again once it's not you know 28 degrees which is what it says it is right now and also for Verity I used the rest of that printed cotton ottoman to make this dress inspired by the dresses worn in the film In the Mood for Love, which of course this whole lookbook was inspired by the vibes of Wong Kar Wai films in general. But this is just my basic all-in-one sleeve again, um, basic block pencil skirt, basic block building blocks, I guess, um, with a more open neckline combined with a stand collar, which we know I do like a stand collar. I do use them quite often. And then another dress that I ended up using the tulip sleeve on was this in otherwise basic dress again, just with the set in sleeve with that tulip sleeve and then the dag neckline, but a little bit higher. It's very pointy and cute, like bat-like, this little neckline. I quite like this dress. It's basically the perfect little black brocade dress for me to have in my wardrobe. And I do love a textured luxury brocade, as we know. Then another Patreon project here. This is a black rayon dress with a little bit of silk for this diamond at the front waist. This is another 1940s pattern design that I decided to give a go. Um, I do quite like this, but for some reason it came out a tiny bit small. Um, this rayon doesn't have a lot of give, so again, this dress is a little bit small on me. I'll have to try it on again, see how I feel. And again, this one might, I might end up selling this one just because sometimes things, depending on the textile or like how I'm sewing that day, sometimes do come out a tiny bit too tight um, in this case. A dress I'm definitely hanging on to though is this rayon crepe number here that again was inspired by a 1940s design, this time from a Montgomery Ward's catalog from I believe 1948 it was. It has these layered drapes in the front and actually is a like step in front wrap dress. You just can't really tell. There's a couple of hooks holding this buddy on here. It's actually very comfortable, breezy and lovely for spring or summer. So I look forward to it warming up again, pairing this with a giant black hat and going out and about antiquing or to lunch, what have you. And then it was time to start thinking about Halloween-ish things. So we have this poison green and dark orchid purple shot uh, silk dupioni blouse. This is the same shirt pattern as I was using to make my shirts last year, just with a more epic sleeve. So I added muchness to the sleeves, as I said, for this video, and I do quite like the result. I look forward to wearing this with a vest as well over it, or a, a traditional sort of button front vest, or even just like a lace-up sort of pirate wench kind of corsetty top that I need to make sometime as well would look good with this. But it was time to start making my Mandragora suit, and for that I made this batty backed blazer as the mock-up. So this is a black polyester shantung jacket with the new my new favorite princess scene where it goes up into the neckline instead. But I just love this jacket and I love the bats down the back. I honestly want to make another one. I have some brown fabric in my stash that I've kind of earmarked to make another of these. I don't know if I'll do bats down the back or might do try and do moths down the back of the brown one. We'll see how it goes. I made this purple lightweight rayon chalet dress over on Patreon in September, I believe it was. Although we have our pumpkins out already because you can't stop me. Um, with this diamond cut out. And then it's got a really asymmetric design. Like the skirt has weird pleats going on. The top has, one shoulder has gathering and there's pleats next to the bust. It's kind of a strange design. So I had to give it a try as soon as I saw the vintage pattern. But yes, still working on the Mandragora suit over on the channel. So here is the side swept pencil skirt that I made out of the Mandragora silk from Silk Baron. I do love me some Silk Baron, as we know. Uh, they have delicious things over there, but this is the ribbed silk from them in the color Mandragora. This is not just named Mandragora because it's fun. It's because that's what they called this silk, by the way. So it's called the Mandragora suit because that's what the name of the silk is. But here's the skirt that I made. And then I made, of course, another one in a orange polyester taffeta, which hangs differently, but I, I, I like this one almost better. It hangs really smoothly, this skirt, and looks great with my baddie backed blazer for October, of course, but I think I can wear either of these pieces any time of the year. This isn't too Halloween-ish, is it? Well, even if it is, I'm going to wear it anyway. Let's, let's be real. This is a great outfit for going out to dinner in my world. But yes, the Mandragora jacket in all its beaded glory is here. Probably my favorite thing I made this year. Probably the most epic thing I've made for a while, uh, other than the costuming pieces. This is the most like couture garment I've made in a long time. So it has hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of work down the back of this to make all these beaded bugs, sew them on, and then fill everything in with bugs and sequins and beads and bits of gold work thread, all kinds of stuff. I will again link the video for this project in the card here because it probably is my favorite project of the year. 
and I have my simple little black dress, my little black Halloween dress here, because the cutout of the neckline is, of course, subtly coffin shaped, but otherwise this is a very simple dress with a all-in-one sleeve, the yoke um, neckline with a little bit of gathering near the coffin there, and then just a simple A-line skirt. This is very easy to make, and honestly, I wouldn't mind having one in other colors. So we'll see how that goes in the future. I'm happy to have the black in my closet though. And this was the brown crepe, upside down, more like 1940s looking, well, more traditionally 40s, earlier 40s looking dress here that has this upside down coffin panel in the front here with gathering surrounding it. I do want to make a couple of tweaks to this design, but I do think I will use it again in the future. And back to Silk Dupioni in an iridescent finish, this time red shot with black threads, cross threads, to make this rather vampiric sort of menswear, like 18th century, 19th century menswear inspired blouse. As I said in the video, I really do need some sort of sword to pair with this because I feel like it would be the perfect accessory. I haven't taken fencing in years, but I did take fencing when I was 12. So I took fencing and archery when I was a kid because I loved the Lord of the Rings and I wanted to be an elf. So, you know, when it comes to nerd cred, I really do go way back. And October's Patreon project was this two-toned 1940s rayon dress with its peplum that's got like this flared peplum that's two-tiered in the front and then extends on over to the back. And then I have this sash that's part of that peplum here. And I uh, embroidered some sequined spider webs onto that, of course, to wear with a spider brooch. It's kind of perfect for like a holiday craft fair or lunch during October. Whereas then, of course, I made this dress, which is the kind of dream Halloween cocktail dress here with this burnt orange taffeta overlay of a spider web net that has sprinklings of sequins all over it. And this bat collar and again, the science web skirt. I do quite love this dress. It was the first dress I made back after being very sick with COVID. Like I was just bedridden, but it was a lot. And so I do not wish to have the plague again, but this was a good way to recover. Then here I am in the Baton Rouge robe, AKA the big bat winged robe here in this lovely dark claret sort of colored polyester chiffon with a little bit of lace going on here. And these just absolutely giant sleeves. Um, I do need to add on a little bit of black trim to the hem of this so that it can be, a, you know, it's finished length a little bit longer. I need to get some black chiffon trim to throw on the bottom of this. And then honestly, I just want to make one of these in every jewel tone color. So again, that I can scare the post people. And then I made the black mermaid skirt in cotton sateen here. Again, too long to be wearing with short heels as I am here, but I wanted it to pull on the ground dramatically. But I think this will be a great evening wear staple in my wardrobe, especially because I have so many like fancy brocade wrap back tops and silk wrap back tops that I could wear with this to go see the symphony, see the ballet. In my future life, I go out to events in the evening a lot more than I do now. At least I hope so. And I could wear this outfit, for example, which is the crushed stretch velvet version of that same skirt silhouette, completely different pattern. This one is very easy to make. I think I might be making another in the new year with all of you if you'd like to see how to make the mermaid skirts in stretch fabric. But yes, here is my new tattoo. <clears throat> it's shaded now, so you'll see it in its full glory soon, but this is another wrap back top with the peplum. That's right. I just made this as a bonus video over on Patreon because I was going to be making this top anyway. So I filmed the process and threw it up over there. And then I made one in purple as well off camera. Again, I made, I make a lot of wrap back tops. It's like my basic t-shirt in my wardrobe now. I just adore them. So easy to throw on, pairs with everything, a great showcase for a really pretty iridescent or brocaded fabric. My favorite pattern ever. And this is just my basic bodice block, mostly. I just made the front into a princess seamed line up into the neckline. And again, use my tulip sleeve for this. And of course this video was quite recent. So you've all seen this sparkly, ridiculously colorful number. That again would be my Christmas dress this year if we were getting dressed up for Christmas. But my family are very casual about Christmas. One day when I have a big Victorian house and it's decked out for Christmas, then I'll have a party, okay? And I'll be making this hooded, collared, weird vest overgarment with you soon in the new year because I have some other fabrics laying around that I think might make a good version of this. Um, so I'll make this garment with you soon. You'll see how to do this big collar that folds up and then also how to do this hood and then this sateen and neon hooded scarf weirdness vest thing. I made another one of these actually recently and I actually forgot that I had filmed the footage for this one. So you'll be seeing the video for that soon as well. And then today I've been working on editing this video for this two-toned, three-toned, eight-toned jacket here. It's got color blocking. She's got texture blocking. Really, it's a culmination of all the things I've been working on this year to make this very strange cyberpunk inspired jacket, which is just sort of my imagining of if Terry Mugler did costumes for cyberpunk. Really, honestly, this is kind of what I'm trying to channel here. And I made this stretch knit mock neck top with a little bit of gathering up into the shoulder. I just need to perfect this pattern. I think I need to put more gathering into it. It just needs a little bit more gathering, depending on the fabric. Um, and then I will share this pattern with you soon. 
And we've got the big open collared, foldable collared dress that I made with this two layers of sleeve in this oil slick sort of snakeskin print, weird velvet stretch as the accent in this one with again, my favorite fabric ever, black cotton sateen. You would think that like I had invested in black cotton sateen, but it's not a thing, you know? Uh, I just, I always talk about it because it is my favorite. It's a very reliable friend to me and I love it. But speaking of Thierry Mugler and watching old 90s runway shows, I was kind of obsessed with the idea of these high slit pencil skirts, but <laughs> it would be a bit scandalous for me normally. And then I thought, oh, I could wear it over the robot suit. So I made this skirt in an evening, uh, you know, a couple nights before I filmed this video. It was one of the last, if not the last project I made for this video and one of the last projects I made this year, but I do love it. So happy to have it now. Then also for Synapse, I made this knit dress. This is a like asymmetric, uh, like tube dress. I'll show you how to make this. It's super easy. It's basically that skirt that I made earlier in the year with a bit of an asymmetric top thrown on at the waist, all combined together. And it's just two pieces, very simple to make, very quick to make. Hence why I made both the black faux leather version and this sparkly duochrome, well not sparkly, shiny, blindingly shiny and iridescent version as well. And then we have my new favorite coat, even though it wouldn't be warm enough for 28 degrees outside right now. It'd be good in fall though. And it's got that silk collar lining. And then this is a thick navy cotton sateen here. And again, has this uh, changeable collar that I can move around and fold any which way that I wish. And I actually just picked up some magnets to try inside of these collars so that I can fold them up and have them kind of stay better without having to put hooks everywhere, which I would honestly for the look. And we finish of course with the iridescent duster coat that I just showed you how to make last week here on the channel. Quite a task to make, but it's probably worth it because it does look like I'm just wearing dragonfly wings or something. I'm very much looking forward to making another of these next time actually in brown dupioni silk, so you'll see that soon. So that was everything I made in the year of 2022. And as I'm speaking to you, it's actually a few weeks in the past in your timeline because I'm trying to pre-film for December so I can clean up the mess that is my creative life and regular life and try and get everything back in order and maybe even take a little bit of writing time over this holiday season. So I don't think I'll be making anything else. So this should be a pretty complete list of everything I made this last year. And of course, as always, I will say that I want to make less next year, but we'll see how it goes because that's what I said last year. Um, I do have quite a lot going on next year, possibly a cross country move uh, and a big trip. And I don't know, I might be quite busy to be making this many garments. So hopefully I can scale back. Although I would rather move finished projects as opposed to move my stash. We'll see how it goes. But thank you as always for watching today and happy holidays to all of you who are celebrating the season and a huge thank you to my patrons who make my work possible. I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.